1 Corinthians 15, starting verse 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And this is where my testimony comes in. For many, many, many years, I have been a Christian believing in God, believing in Jesus Christ, believing in the Holy Spirit, loving the Word of God, worshiping all of those things that we Christians do. But I was living under bondage to the flesh, living a, a defeated, carnal Christianity. And I tried many times to overcome and I would do well and then I would fail and that was my Christian life up and down uh, sometimes really hot for the Lord and other times cold uh, lukewarm he who is the strongest of all bound up the strong man in me and spoiled his house and took me as plunder took the spoils, and that was me. He has delivered me from the power of darkness and has translated me into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ. These scriptures mean a lot because this is exactly what he is doing and he has done and will continue to do. Where I was dead because of sin, there has been a resurrection. The Spirit of God, Jesus Christ, in me. The resurrection where I have been in corruption now he has raised me up in incorruption where I have been in dishonor because of my sins I am being raised in glory whereas I have been in experiencing weakness my the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak and not strong to overcome certain areas that I've been in bondage to. It is now sown in power. Now the power of God working in me, helping me to overcome those areas of weaknesses, those strongholds. Because of my sins or my actions, it has brought dishonor to me, to my reputation, it is now raised in glory. Whereas I've been walking and living a spiritual life, if you want to call it, but I've been doing it in the power of the natural man, which is the Adamic nature. Now it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. There is the carnal Christian and there is the spiritual Christian. The carnal Christian is what he talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you and being and strife in divisions, are ye not carnal, and walk as men? So there's a carnal Christian, and then there is the spiritual Christian, and the carnal Christian cannot inherit the kingdom of God, even though we call ourselves Christians, but if we're living in the flesh, we cannot please God. And it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 50, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. So even though I profess Christ Jesus as my Lord and Savior, but was he really? Because I was not obeying him in all areas. I was giving in to my uh, addictions, my vices, my uh, old patterns, old habits, sin nature. And even though I, I would try, but I would 
fail and the reason I failed many times is because I refused to yield to Jesus. I refused to submit to him so that he could through his power work in me to overcome. And so that's the difference. The difference of a carnal Christian versus a spiritual Christian is the key is because he's already done it for us. He's already there. He's here. He's trying to help us to overcome. He's trying to help us to live holy and righteous and to obey him. But we have to yield. We have to come under his yoke and yield to him and do what he says. And if we refuse, and if we want to do our own will, our own way, then we'll live defeated Christian lives, still battling with the flesh and the flesh still having dominion over us. But the minute you make up your mind that you're going to submit to his lordship, that you're going to do his will, which means that you have to crucify the flesh, you have to crucify the lust of the flesh and of the eyes, you have to crucify the pride of life in you, then he's able to come in because now you've mortified, you've killed the flesh. Now there is a resurrection of the dead. Now the corruption is gone. You are being raised in incorruption. Now the dishonor is gone and now there's glory, meaning uh, you're doing things that are pleasing, pleasant, pleasurable. You're doing things that please God. You're doing things that please man in the sense of being a good worker or being a, a good wife or a good husband or being a good neighbor. The, the weaknesses, the vices, the old habits that you've been trying to overcome, where you've been weak, now you have power. Now, because you've yielded yourself to Jesus, now there's power in you to, to be able to overcome these areas. Whereas you couldn't before because you would try, you might do well for a certain period of time, and then you failed and you're back to your old patterns, your old habits. Now, because you're yielded to him, now he comes with power and you destroys the works of the devil in your life. And now those old habits, those old patterns are shattered. They're gone because of what he's doing in you. Praise the Lord.